morning, everybody, and welcome to Ask the Expert, an award-winning daily live show from 8.30 to 9 a.m. to help small businesses. If you've got any questions for me today, you can ask them in the comments on the live feed. And if you, if you need any more advice, you can join the official Intuit QuickBooks SMB community group on Facebook, where there are accountants and business experts on hand for you 24-7 to help you with your questions. During the live session today, we are going to be running a poll, so please do engage with it and I will reveal the results at the end. So good morning, everybody. Happy Thursday. My name is Rachel Martin. I am a speaker, an author, a business owner, and most importantly for today, I am an accountant. I specialize in working with female entrepreneurs and influencers and our wider accountancy practice, Strivex, Helps, to, helps businesses of all shapes and sizes, and we absolutely love offering a person-centered, holistic approach to the way that we offer and deliver our accountancy services. I'm really active on Instagram, and I would love to see you over on my channel. You can find me by searching for accountant underscore she. Okay, so whilst we are waiting for some of your questions to come in, I wanted to run through some topics which we are getting asked a lot of questions about. So first on the list for today is cash flow forecasting and my top tips for cash flow forecasting. So the first tip when looking at forecasting is to make sure that your historic information is up to date and accurate so that you can use it in the right way to help you look forwards. The next tip is sales forecasting. So businesses that have a clear system for being able to forecast their sales revenue, um, much more accurate forecasting their cash than those who guesstimate. So guesswork leaves room for over optimism, whereas having a clear and solid sales pipe pipeline provide much more certainty when looking at how and when your revenue is going to come in. So the third tip today on cash flow forecasting is to know your forecast and compare it to your actuals. So if you regularly look at the differences between your pro projections and what actually happened, you can challenge yourself to understand the reasons behind the differences. And then by exploring each difference and questioning how you got the incorrect forecast, this will help you to improve your predictions over time. Fourth tip on cash flow forecasting is to remember all of your expenses. So it's really easy to underestimate the cash flowing out of your business or even omit items altogether. So always make sure that you've included all of your expenses. Big one-off payments can be a killer for cash flow and they're sometimes the easiest to forget. Number five tip on cash flow forecasting is to keep your cash flow projections up to date. Keeping your forecast up to date can take time and it can be easy to let it slide down your priority list. But if you do that, your numbers are immediately wrong. Carving out specific time in your weekly schedule for this sort of admin is a really, really great way to stay disciplined and doing a little bit often is key. The sixth tip on cash flow forecasting for you today is to have a robust credit control process. So having a credit control process brings a lot more predictability into your cash revenue. When you're really on it and you're reminding customers of their payment terms, they will be far less likely to pay late. When you've got no system for collecting payments, the customer will pay you when they want to, which makes it infinitely more difficult to create accurate cash flow projections. Finally, on my top tips um, for cash flow today are incorporating taxes and forecasting your taxes within your cash flow is vital. And there are a couple of different ways to do it, depending on how you're managing your bookkeeping and depending on how you are managing your cash flow. So QuickBooks does have a lot of amazing tax planning features, which you can use to update your cash flow forecast based on the real time information that's held within the software. Alternatively, if you're not yet on QuickBooks, you can look at building formulas into your cash flow spreadsheet, which are able to forecast VAT and corporation tax for you. So just to run through them again, my top tips for cash flow forecasting are firstly to make sure that your historic information is up to date and accurate. The next is having a robust system to be able to forecast your sales. 
The next is to understand your forecast, understand your budget, and then compare it to your actuals. The fourth was to remember all of your expenses, not just the recurring ones. Number five is to keep up to date and to keep your forecast up to date. Number six was having a robust credit control process. And number seven was incorporating taxes into your cash flow. So next on the frequently asked questions at the moment is COVID. So I wanted to take some time to quickly run through the support that's available to you at the moment as a small business owner. Um, hopefully you all know all of the ins and outs about every grant that is available to you. So apologize if I am repeating myself, but it's really important that we get this information out to everybody and to the people that need it the most. So for a lot of small business owners at the moment, the information is constantly changing and it can be really, really hard to keep on top of things and to figure out exactly what support is available to you. So I really, really do hope this helps you and gives you a little bit of insight into how we do things within our practice and how we can help you. So the first one feels like a permanent fixture. And again, I can't remember when it didn't exist. It is the job retention or the furlough scheme. So the JRS can cover 80% of wages for employees up to a maximum cap of two and a half thousand pounds. And the scheme has been extended to the 30th of April, 21. Next up, we've got the COVID business interruptions loan scheme. So if you have a turnover of up to 45 million, you can apply for loans, overdrafts, invoice finance and asset finance of up to 5 million. The fourth and final SEISS grant is running from February 2021 and April 2021, but we haven't been advised at what level this will be at yet and only those currently elig eligible for SEISS, so have received historic grants, will be eligible for the extension. They're not taking on new applicants. Moving on to the next small business support, we've got the local restriction support grant, which is for businesses which were forced to close due to the local tiered restrictions. This grant is there to help businesses to close. Sorry, the grant is there to help businesses that had to close because of the local restrictions. Um, you need to be paying business rates on your premises, but local councils may also offer grants to businesses that don't pay rates at their discretion. So really important to contact your local business hub and ask some questions on that one. Um, so small businesses with properties that have a rateable value of less than 15,000 will get £1,334 a month. Medium sized businesses with a rateable value of between 15,000 and 51,000 will get 2,000 a month and larger businesses can claim £3,000 a month. This is a grant, so the money doesn't have to be paid back. The next grant that we've got is called the Top Up Grant for Retail, Hospitality and Leisure Businesses. And this is additional funding which has been made available specifically for the retail, hospitality and leisure businesses within the form of a one-off Top Up Grant. So the maximum available is £9,000 and it's staggered between £4,000, £6,000 and £9,000, depending on the rateable value of your property. Um, this is in addition to any existing business support, including the local restriction support grant and business rates relief. So again, super, super important to speak to a local business hub where they can help you. Next up, we've got the local restriction support grant, which is available to businesses which were not forced to close within the tier system, but did suffer severely reduced demand because of it. So these grants are worth up to £2,100 for each month that the tiered restrictions applied. They're retrospective as well, so areas that have already faced restrictions are eligible and they will be backdated. The local authorities, again, will be the people that are administering the grants to you and business businesses will receive funding equivalent to £934 a month for properties with a rateable value of £15,000 or under, £1,400 a month for properties with a rateable value of over £15,000 and below fifty-one, and £2,100 a month for properties with a rateable value of £51,000 and over, and again, local authorities will get an extra 5% outside of those amounts to distribute to businesses that fall out of the business rate system, but do still need support. Uh, so finally, we have the additional restrictions grant, which is specifically for businesses that aren't covered by any other grants. So this has been an amazing step forward because we've seen a lot of people seem to fall through the gaps, whether that is because 
they're struggling to reach out to their local authority or because they don't pay business grants. So local authorities can give out this discretionary funding to businesses that aren't actually eligible for any of any other of the local uh, local supports. So the final thing that I wanted to cover off today was self-assessments. Um, it is January. You're probably seeing everywhere at the moment uh, all about self-assessments and that the deadline is coming. So the deadline that is going to hit on the 31st of January is the deadline for people to file their self-assessment tax return for the year that ended the 5th of April 2020. So if you were self-employed or if you earned over £100,000 or if you received income from a rental property, for example, you will need to file a self-assessment tax return and you need to do that by the 31st of January. The deadline of the 31st of January is the deadline to file and submit your tax return and also to pay your tax. So even if you have already prepared and filed your tax return but you've not yet paid the tax, you do need to get on it and consider this a reminder from me. Um, so I'm just going to have a drink and then I'm going to start taking your questions. Okay, we've had, um, we've had some good questions come in already. So Kyra on Instagram has asked a great question following my cash flow forecasting. So Kyra has asked, how far in the future should we make our cash flow forecasts for? So that's a really, really great question, Kyra. So it does depend on where you're at in your business, how early on you are in your business, how much data you have to look backwards on to help you forecast forward as well. So for example, when we're doing it within our company, we normally go for a full 18 months. It's really important to remember as well, the further away from today you get, the less accurate that information is going to be. For example, if 18 months ago you did you did your cash flow planning, it probably didn't incorporate a global pandemic. So the further away from today's date you get, the less accurate your sales forecasts are going to be. So once, once you get past your current sales funnel, however long that may be, you, you are going to be guessing. So it's really important to remember that the further away you get it doesn't involve any changes to any pricing that you might make in the future. You can't forecast any price increases. You can't forecast for uncertain events. So 18 months, 12 to 18 months is a really, really good benchmarker. Um, or even maybe to the end of your next financial year or to the end of this year and then to the end of your next financial year is also a really good benchmark. So just take the data that you have, work it. Also, you can go on and on and on and on and repeat everything that you've been doing so far. Again, it's just important to remember that accuracy declines as time goes on. Um, so hopefully that's answered your question, Kyra. I've had another message come in from Jessica on Facebook Messenger and Jessica has asked, good morning, Rachel. I'm in my first year of business and just completed four months of existence. How do I go about my forecasts? I'm working with a lot of assumptions around expected sales and expected expenses and the pandemic and uncertain situation doesn't help. I feel you pain, Jessica. Okay, so that's a really great question and there's a couple of different ways and different points to note here. So. In terms of assumptions, a lot of the time, and especially in this case where you've where you've got you've only got four months to analyze going backwards, um, assumptions are absolutely fine. Um, I realize I haven't actually said that yet. Assumptions are fine. I always, and the way I prepare it for my clients and the way I instruct my clients to prepare their cash flow forecast is to always do it on a worst case scenario basis. So if you have a um, supplier that you're not sure how much it's gonna be, or for example, 2021 is the year that you decide to really smash um, SEO, search engine optimization, and you haven't yet had the quote back, but you think it's gonna be around 10,000 pounds for a six month period of SEO work, go high. So with your expenses, go as high as the worst case scenario, and with your sales, go as low as the worst case scenario. So then at the very minimum, you know that if your sales are having a bad day and your expenses are having a bad day for the next six months, you still know at the worst case scenario, you can survive. So if you think one of these grants applies to you and you think some of the funding might 
apply to you, but you're not sure, do not include it. So the first thing is assumptions are fine. And again, sometimes that's all we have to go on is some assumptions, but it's really important to know that doing it with a worst case scenario hat on, and it sounds a bit pessimistic, but actually it means that you can kind of sleep at night knowing that even if the worst case scenario happens, you can see where your forecast is going to be. You can see how much cash you've got. And like actually knowing that helps you to prepare for it. If you're burying your head in the sand and you forecast your sales way more optimistically than you think they're going to be, and you put your expenses way lower than you think they're going to be, it's actually not an accurate forecast. So that's the first thing. The second thing as well, again, being within the first four months, you probably don't have a huge amount of data to go back on. So in terms of analysing that, the, a really good place to start is to review your bank account, look exactly at what's happened and plot those moving forwards. Look at any new direct debits that you've set up that might not even have been collected yet. Again, especially from our perspective, in the first four or five months of business, there are a lot of direct debits that we have now that we didn't then. So look at any direct debit mandates that you've signed in the last month that haven't cleared yet. Look at anything that you are considering moving forwards. And it's always worth, again, on worst case scenario, to pop a couple of contingencies in there. So sometimes at the very beginning when you've got no data, some people plot like £2,000 every month, every two months for unanticipated expenditure. And then when that come, when that expenditure actually does happen and gets spent, you reduce your contingency by that amount. But I hope that helps you, Jessica. Um, basically, plan for the worst, and then you will always be pleasantly surprised is my lovely, cheerful message on this dreary Thursday morning. <laughs> but I hope that answered your question, Jessica. Um, I've had a question from Dalton on Facebook Messenger, and Dalton has asked, I am a plumber, and I need to do my gas training course to improve my company, which would cost £3,500. Can I claim this expense? And if so, how, how much? Is there any guidance from HMRC? Okay, so the short answer is yes, there is guidance from HMRC. Um, when it comes to training, especially for company directors, it is quite careful. So I would definitely refer you to the guidance. But the general rule from HMRC is that if a business is wholly and exclusively for the business use, and it sounds like if you weren't a self-employed plumber, you probably wouldn't be paying for this gas training course. So um, if it is wholly and exclusively for the purpose of the business, you should be able to claim it. But it is always very important to look at the guidance and just check that that specific course does map with exactly what you are doing. Um, again, Dalton, if you do want um, specific advice, please do get in touch on Instagram. I'm more than happy to have a chat with you and we can get to the right answer together. Um, okay, Ozzy from Twitter has asked, hi Rachel, I've just set up an LLC and was wondering how do you pay yourself annual leave as a company director? Okay, so this is a really interesting question and um, I recently did a whole webinar seminar that was an hour long on how to calculate your hourly rate as someone that's self-employed and a really important part of that is understanding that as a business director, as somebody that's self-employed, no one's paying you annual leave, no one's paying you sick pay and actually if you worked out that you wanted to take home £40,000 a year as a company director or as someone that's self-employed, you don't just take your um, £40,000 divided by 52, divided by five, that's your daily rate. That's not how it works. So as a company director or as someone that's self-employed, you need to calculate how much you need personally from the company to be able to withdraw. You then need to look at your actual billable hours and within the billable hour, hours available to you within a year, you need to incorporate annual leave, sick pay, bank holidays are something that people very often forget. So when you're looking at your charge out rate, you need to incorporate annual leave and sick pay because when you are self-employed, if you decide to pay yourself a sick pay or annual leave, it's coming out of your own pocket. So it's really important that in terms of processing it on payroll, it's really easy, it's very straightforward and you just need to keep a log of how much annual leave you've taken. But from the financial perspective, very, very important when you're doing your forecasting to take annual leave, bank holidays and sick pay into consideration when you are calculating what your salary and your hourly rate should be. So I've had another question come in from Facebook Messenger and it's called, it's from Sue. 
Good morning, Rachel. I'm making some money selling art through my Instagram page. I have only made £500 until now. I might sell some more, but I'm not planning to make this my sole business. I have not prepared myself on whether I should register my business, myself as a business or pay taxes. Can you guide me, please? Of course I can, Sue. Um, again, I run an entire business platform on Instagram. So I see a lot of people like Sue who have been able, maybe just on lockdown alone, been able to turn a hobby into something that is generating a bit of revenue for them. So it's really, really exciting. So firstly, congratulations, Sue. This is amazing. Um, Secondly, yeah, it's a really, really common question that we do see a lot because first and foremost, this is your hobby. This is something you enjoy. So it sort of escalates and gets to the point before you've had a chance to think about it. So completely understand. So the first thing is it's really important to register as self-employed whenever you just you start taking untaxed income. So what that means is when you have a job, when you have a nine to five you get paid at the end of the month and all of the money that comes to you is already taxed. By the time it comes to you, it's yours to spend. When you're receiving money like this, and this is a really, really good example, um, Sue is selling, selling artwork on Instagram, the money that's coming to her is not taxed. So regardless of how much she's made, at the point that you start receiving untaxed income, you really should register with HMRC as self-employed. That doesn't trigger anything. It's not an ejector seat. When you register as self-employed with HMRC, all that means is that you're telling HMRC, good morning, my name's Sue, and I'm now receiving untaxed income. That then enables HMRC basically to be able to nudge and remind you that you might need to file a tax return, which is great so that you don't forget and that you don't get into any trouble. There is something called um, the small business allowance and what that means is that until your turnover and not your profit, so when all of the cash that you've received to date goes over £1,000, you need to um, prepare and file a tax return and to declare that income. Until the turnover goes over 100, uh, sorry, until the turnover goes over £1,000 in one tax period, HMRC consider what you're doing a hobby and you do not need to file a tax return. So Sue, for your specific situation at the moment where you've been doing it for a while and you've made £500, if it is still £500 at the 5th of April this year, you wouldn't need to file a tax return because, because it is below the £1,000 turnover threshold. So the first point there is that it's really important to register as self-employed with HMRC as soon as you are receiving untaxed income. But it's important to know that until your turnover goes over £1,000, that is actually relief for you and that you don't have to prepare, file and submit a tax return. So hopefully um, that answers your question, Sue. Uh, okay, Siraj so on Instagram DM has message to say, um, how has the national lockdown been for your clients? And are there any success stories that you can share? Uh, great question and very cheerful, happy question. So thank you so much, Siraj, for your question. Um, we actually have been really, really, I don't want to use the word lucky because it's not luck. Um, we've been working incredibly hard. Our clients have been working incredibly hard. So we have been incredibly proactive and engaging on social media. And we have absolutely utilized social media in order to keep in touch with our clients, to educate our clients and to make sure our clients are OK. So that's the first thing. The second thing is there has been so much success within our client base. We've seen people who um, used to run pest control businesses pivot and were making COVID face shields within 48 hours. Like the level of success that we've seen, being able to drive and support has been phenomenal. Um, I personally am studying an executive MBA alongside running the business. So to be able to use the um, strategic help that I have is um, is amazing and to be able to apply that is also great so but again obviously at the same time 2020 was incredibly difficult for a lot of people so um, there's been people that actually have relied on us very heavily and we've been able to help them get as many grants and support as they can but um, especially from our perspective in working with a very broad range of business on the whole people have been managing the government support has been really vital in helping them to continue and um we actually feel really positive going into 2021 that um that we're gonna 
see a lot of people making a comeback and have used 2020 to sort of get their head down. And now we're really going to see some amazing things happen. And that generally, I think, is is quite a common opinion, I think. Um, this might be the last question, I think. So I've had a question come in on Twitter from Tiffany saying, hi, Rachel, great show today. Thanks, Tiffany. Um, any tips to incre increase cash flow given current market environment? What advice do you give your clients? Um, great question, Tiffany. So the first thing I would say is to um, make sure firstly that you have applied for all of the government help that's available to you. There is so much and there's so there's so much in so many different places. So HMRC have released a really, really good tool. So if you Google HMRC COVID support, there's actually a checker online where you can enter some information about your business and um, HMRC will tell you what support is available to you. So step number one for helping your cash flow is to firstly check that you have all of the cash in your pocket that's available to you. And it could be that actually you've already taken a bounce back loan, but you didn't realize there was a bounce back loan top up scheme. So you might be able to claim a little bit more just to increase your cash. Um, the second thing is to make use of any payment terms that you have just to keep the cash within your business for as long as you can. So if customers are paying you on time, that doesn't always mean that you have to pay your suppliers early. Make sure that you understand what credit terms are, how to leverage them and how to keep the cash within the company. Uh, another thing that's really cool is to have a look at, um, if you are that registered, have a look at the different VAT schemes. So there's a VAT accrual scheme and there's a VAT cash scheme. So if you are a business that is relying heavily on cash and managing cash flow, then um, the VAT cash scheme might be more appropriate for you. Um, and actually it's something that a lot of people maybe didn't realize when they registered that they were able to do. So I would definitely encourage you also to have a look at the um, cash VAT scheme. Again, speak to an accountant to just check that you are eligible and that it's right for you. Um, but software like QuickBooks makes it super easy to transition over and to continue filing your VAT returns with no interruptions. So I'd say there are some additional tips for you, Tiffany. So hopefully that answered um, your question. And then the final question uh, it has come in on Facebook from Shawcat and they have asked, good morning. Um, I have a coffee shop with low demand and with the additional grants, I'm barely surviving. Um, is there, sorry, is there any additional help I can receive as I wanted to renovate my store this year, but have no money for it? Um, again, I think Shortcut, as we've run through today, so many and so much of the funding at the moment is, um, is being distributed by your local authority. So I would really encourage you to firstly speak to your local authority. They are amazing groups of people that are super friendly and have an abundance of support at their disposal. So I would really, really encourage you to speak to your local business hub. And then second to that, speak to your accountant because they will absolutely be able to help you. Um, there are some big one-off grants, again, available to people at the moment if you are doing renovation specifically that reduces your co2 emissions we're seeing some really good support available at the moment so that was the last question that we had time for this morning and if you remember at the beginning we were running a poll during um during today's session and we asked you are you optimistic about your business growth in 2021 and 100% of you answered yes. Um, I'm going to take that as my cash flow forecasting was the motivational speech that you needed today. Um, but I'm so, so happy to hear that 100% of you are optimistic about your business growth in 2021. Um, again, that's something that we are seeing so much of. And it's so, I think as well, it's contagious. So if you're speaking to someone that's really optimistic, um, specifically about their business, it's going to make you feel really optimistic too. So I'm really, really happy that everybody is optimistic about their business growth in 2021. So thank you all so much for tuning in and thank you for the incredible questions this morning. I've had the best time. If you have any more questions for me, you can contact me on Instagram. I would love to see you over there. You can search for me at accountant underscore she. So coming up on Ask the Expert tomorrow, I am so excited to tell you we have Fern Cotton. Fern Cotton is a popular broadcaster, founder of the well-being brand Happy Place and author. Her most recent book, which I am super excited to read, is Speak Your Truth, and it was published earlier this month. 
make sure to tune in alongside me because I will definitely be there and maybe she will be answering your question live. Super quick reminder that if you need any more advice, you can join the official Intuit QuickBooks SMB community group on Facebook, where accountants and business experts are on hand for you 24 seven. I've really, really enjoyed answering your questions this morning. So have a great day.